We're here at the Occupy Wall Street protest in New York City. As you see behind me, there are thousands of protesters that are here to express their frustration with the economy, the administration, and the taxes that uh, Wall Street gets. And Yom Kippur is just around the corner, and Daniel Soretsky has organized a Kol Nidre uh, at this protest. This is really unique uh, because, uh, you know, when you look around, you know, you see people from different backgrounds coming here, and to develop something like this uh, for, uh, for Yom Kippur, it's truly really unique. Um, let's learn more about why uh, Daniel created uh, this event. Occupy Wall Street is a really unique uh, opportunity for people to express their frustrations. But at the same time, there's opportunities for unity. And you're doing something very interesting uh, this Yom Kippur. Talk a little bit about uh, your initiative. Uh, I am organizing a, uh, a minion for Kol Nidre at Occupy Wall Street. So far we have about 300 people signed up uh, to participate in the minion, uh, which is going to be held tomorrow night in Zakati Park, where uh, folks are camping out to protest the uh, current economic situation. Um, we have uh, rabbinical students from three different denominations who are assisting in um, putting together the service for tomorrow, as well as uh, a performer from storytelling. Uh, and uh, we received a wonderful uh, loan of Machzorim from uh, the Rabbinical Assembly of Conservative Judaism. Um, so it's really uh, been amazing watching the community uh, come together from all different denominations and non-denominational, post-denominational, uh, just everybody across the board coming together for this uh, service. And, you know, whenever you develop this type of program, you, can, you don't know where, where it's going to go. And, um, you know, how did you actually come up with the idea? Uh, well, um, I decided last week, uh, two days before, uh, well, actually, I guess the era of Rosh Hashanah, I decided I wanted to try to put together a Shabbos potluck um, in Zakati Park. Um, and, you know, the last minute just threw it together and managed to get 25 people to come out um, and have a, a Shabbos meal in the park to celebrate Rosh Hashanah and to, and to uh, you know, sh uh, stand in solidarity with the demonstrators. Um, and um, while there, it occurred to me that, um, you know, uh, Yom Kippur is coming up and it's a fast day. And we know from Isaiah 58, it says, you know, that a real fast um, is one in which you not just afflict yourself by not eating or, you know, like rubbing yourself in ashes or, you know, wearing sackcloth, but it's one in which you stand with the downtrodden and the oppressed. You stand up for uh, the economically destitute. You clothe the naked and feed the hungry and house the homeless. Um, and so uh, it seems completely appropriate um, to afflict ourselves instead of sitting in our cozy shuls uh, to go out into the streets and join the demonstrators who are fighting for economic justice for the disadvantage. And walking around the area, it, 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 it's surreal. And, you know, putting together a, uh, an event like this comes with obviously challenges because there's so many people there. Um, talk a little bit about um, sort of your plan, like how... How do you see everything kind of playing out? You, you know, you're, you're going to have uh, you know the people that registered, uh, and then you're going you to have people who heard about your your program. So, ha what do you foresee happening? Well, you know, it's 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 going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. You know, I put out a post on my blog and tweeted it out and put an event up on Facebook and invited all my Facebook friends and. Um, you know, within a matter of days, it went from, you know, 10 people showing up to being 300, um, with 110 saying maybe, in addition to the 300 saying yes. Um, and um, people's responses have been so profound um, 
you know, it's gone all around the country. Uh, my phone has been ringing off the hook with press interviews. Um, you know, uh, and it's inspired uh, kind of copycat events now at the Boston and Philadelphia occupations that are happening also. So it's become a national movement to bring Cole Nidre to, to the Occupy Everywhere movement, um, which is really just kind of magical. Um, and so um, I think it's going to be phenomenal tomorrow, even if, you know, the 300 people are lying and, you know, like 20 show up, I still think it's going to be amazing, but I'm expecting a huge turnout. Um, I think that there's, you know, I've heard that there's a significant presence of Jews already on the ground participating in the demonstrations, and I've been there and I know that there are, but even more than I know are already there, and they're really psyched about this because they were uh, not excited about leaving for services, and this gives them an opportunity to have the best of both worlds. Right. And how does it feel to be the person that's, like, inspiring uh, the people to do this? Like, you know, it's like whenever you create something, it's like you know you're doing this for the community, but now you're you're you I mean you're you're some you're somebody more now. You're 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 bringing people together, uh, not just online but offline. Like I, my old blog used to be called Orthodox Anarchist, and though I may be post Orthodox now, you know I believe in non hierarchical, uh, decentralized organizing models, and so uh, I don't really feel like this is about me at all. This is about um, you know, people coming together for a creative opportunity. Everybody who's participating in making this happening, you know, making this happen, is doing it of their own free volition, collaboratively. I haven't been ordering anybody to do anything. Everything's really, you know, been been happening on a volunteer basis, collaboratively. Um, you know, that said, uh, the fact that I've managed by accident to bring 300 people together for Yom Kippur services uh, and and inspire others to do the same, you know. Um, I'm not worried about whether I'll be written into the Book of Life this year. <laughs> right. I want to wish you, uh, first of all, uh, Gmar Khatima Tova. Thank uh, you. And, uh, and uh, good luck. It's just a, it's a very exciting uh, project. And uh, whenever you're trying to bring in uh, Jews from different backgrounds, uh, is a difficult task. And u- utilizing your skills, uh, using li- utilizing social media to bring this to the forefront, it's... Uh, you know, truly transforming the way that we connect to our global Jewish community. So we wish you uh, all the best. Thank you. And I, I will just add that, um, you know, it's exactly how the protests themselves happened, right? Like they, they came out of a call issued on Facebook that got, you know, recirculated through Twitter. And so just in the same way, that's how our Yom Kippur service is coming together. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's definitely consistent. Um, but also certainly the wave of the future. So I'm glad that uh, I was able to um, tap these technologies to, uh, to achieve this uh, event. As you can see, it's truly a unique experience here. While walking around, you can see a, a unity that has developed here. Uh, there's a makeshift kitchen in the middle of this protest, and there are people that are uh, lying side by side, swing bags, a drum circle, artists, uh, putting things together to express their frustrations. And it really is a truly surreal experience. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching.